happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. I'm Kate from California Carnivores and of all the beautiful carnivorous plants in the world, it's impossible to pick a favorite, but one that I love so much is Darlingtonia Californica and that is the pitcher plant native to Northern California and Southwest Oregon. I love it so much that I made this video all about it and its beautiful habitat. So I hope you enjoy and happy growing. Hey guys, it's Kate at California Carnivores. And as you can see, today I'm not actually at California Carnivores. I'm in a special place called Butterfly Valley Botanical Reserve. And this is this beautiful special place in Northern California. It's in Plumas County up in the Sierra Mountains and it is home to not only a ton of beautiful flowers that only grow in this kind of habitat but also our California pitcher plant. So we have Darlingtonia californica growing wild here and you can find these plants um, all over the Sierras and then parts of um, Northern California like in the Trinities and the Siskiyou Mountains and also up into Southwest Oregon. But the habitat that you'll always find them in are these always wet fens. So sometimes boggy conditions, mostly these fens. And fens are different from bogs. Fens are characterized by always having cool running water, sometimes slow moving water, just under the surface. And a bog is generally just stagnant water that's collected from rain that just sits there. So that gives us a lot of insight into um, what kind of conditions it would take to grow these plants. And that's what makes them so, um, you know, slightly more difficult in the carnivorous plant world because they never want their feet to be warm. They always want cool running water over those roots. So if you compare these to Saracenia, which are their closest living relative, Saracenia, the pitcher plants on the um, Gulf Coast and off the East Coast, and those grow in bogs. So those can just sit in the warmest, most stagnant, muckiest water, and they will be so happy. But if you put a Darlingtonia in those conditions, it'll probably die. So these bogs are really special habitats. Botanically, they hold very rare species often, and species that you'll only find um, in these wet areas. So I'm gonna show you a couple of other things that grow around here. So it's a little early in the year here, and even though it's like an 80 degree day, um, these guys are just starting to grow their new pitchers. So here we have last year's pitchers. You can see kind of they have their little brown tops. This is last year's pitcher. And then just starting to come up are these glowy green new pitchers. You see this little mustache forming here. So here's one of last year's pictures, and I just wanted to show you this incredible morphology and its method for luring in prey. So this appendage, which I like to call a mustache, is actually kind of red, and it makes a sticky nectar, which attracts the insects. So they land on this, and they follow the little nectar trail up into here. And you can see that's where the opening is. Once it's inside, it actually gets kind of confused because see these little holes up here? These are like little windows called Venestraria. And it thinks that that's a way out. So it kind of bounces around in there trying to get out rather than come, coming out the way it went in. Bounces around and eventually starts coming over here to this tube. Now once it starts going down here it can't really go up. The walls are smooth, there's downward pointing hairs, so it's like this one-way street and it just goes down and down and down and down and down. And down towards the bottom is where you have a uh, liquid 
And it was thought for a long time that Darlingtonia didn't make any of its own digestive enzymes, but actually it makes at least one enzyme. And then it also has the help of bacteria, there's larvae in here, different types of microorganisms like little mites and stuff, and they all work together to digest the prey or whatever has come inside and got in the liquid. And then the plant just happily absorbs those nutrients and that's how it gets its nitrogen in nitrogen poor habitats like this one. Okay, I want you to check out how cool these flowers are as well. So this is a Darlingtonia flower and you can see it grows really tall compared to the pitchers. And what you're seeing here, these lovely long kind of yellow green things, these are actually the sepals. So these are the parts that um, cover the bud when this is when this hasn't opened yet. And then underneath is this very cool set of petals. And these are kind of like red and veined. Under there, this is the fruit. And it's almost got this bell shape. And there you can see the stamens. There we go, the stamens up top. And this is the stigma, and this is the fruit. So, kind of unusual flower morphology. And actually, they didn't know what pollinated this for the longest time. But just recently, there was a good study done where they think that there's this certain species of minor bee that actually just has the right shape to it that um, pollination it's like kind of like the perfect fit of flower to insect. Beautiful. Look at all these flowers. So the flowers of Darlingtonia, they actually start pendant. They're nodding. But as the fruit gets pollinated and ripens, they actually turn upright. And that just helps with seed dispersal. These seed pods, they open, they release the seeds, and the seeds actually have these little tiny burrs on them, and it's thought that they'll get stuck in mammal hair by some kind of like blundering bear wandering through here, and that's how they can get from wet place to wet place. So I just wanted to show you how wet it can get down here. You see it's actually wet down here. And this water is cold too. It's like refreshing. When you have habitats like this where you just constantly have water coming through, it just takes a lot of the nutrients out. So this is actually a pretty nutrient poor area. And that's why you get plants like Darlingtonia and the sundews growing here is because they can capture their own nitrogen. And a lot of these other plants, they're adapted to low nutrient areas just because they have storage bulbs and kind of cool um, biology going on, physiology with their roots. And then you have plants like this Letum glandulosum, which is just almost always occurs in weird nutrient poor bogs of acidic soils. Yeah, it's just kind of a crazy way to take advantage of a place like this. Like, see, there's a, there's a tiny tree in there. And normally, these trees, that's an incense cedar, um, grows. See over there? See how tall the trees are? It's just normal trees, just growing on normal soil. And when you get in here, it's like only special things can grow. And then the trees that are actually in here are like sad and stunted. See, there's you know, a little ponderosa pine there. Just tiny trees. Probably been here for a really long time, just trying to eke it out. Everything else though, super happy. 
I found something else really cool. So there's not just darling Tony out here that's carnivorous. I found sundews. This is Drosera retundifolia. And you can see, look at that, it caught a freaking damselfly. So these sticky sundews, they catch prey. They have these sticky glands on their leaves that the bugs get stuck to because they're lured in by this delicious nectarness. They get stuck and then there are glands that secrete digestive fluids and they just digest the bug right on the leaves and absorb the nutrients. Check out this, all the red here, kind of low growing in the grass, really easy to miss. But it's just everywhere. And look, if you pan out, I mean, <laughs> what sun does? There's so many different butterflies floating around here. And you'd think that this place would be named Butterfly Valley for all of the butterflies everywhere. But I think it's actually named that because the valley, it's shaped like a butterfly. Either way, it's a very magical place and just full of life, full of beautiful flowers and butterflies and moths, dragonflies. Here. Okay, check this out. Huh? Look at this beautiful swallowtail pollinating these orange tiger lilies. These are great flowers, often found in kind of wetland habitats around here. So some really common plants in these moist fens and boggy areas that are often associated with acidic soils are these cool plants in the Ericaceae family. So this up here is our western azalea. This is Rhododendron occidentale. And here's some flowers hanging on. And man, if I could share the smell with you, oh my gosh, it's like the best of rose and jasmine combined, and it's so strong. And you can see there's like some really nice stands in here, and the whole place just smells like this. And then growing right next to it, I love this plant. This is called Ledum glandulosum. This is Labrador tea, and you often find these in bogs that are acidic and it smells really good too but just in a totally different way if you take these leaves here and crush them up it smells just like Vicks vapor rub so one of the cool plants another flower you're going to find always growing with Darlingtonia is this plant called Hastingsia or rush lily. It's not actually a rush or a lily. It's this weird plant in that's closely related to the agave. So it's in the agave family and it's quite a bit different from the agaves because it's in this little group of plants that are soft and herbaceous. So agaves are usually like almost kind of woody with these like very, very fibrous leaves. Um, but these guys are like these weird bulb-like plants that you find in wetlands. And it's dear to my heart because I started studying this plant for my master's thesis because I really liked the habitat that it grew in, which is these wet fens with all sorts of other botanical rarities. And it's really my, my gateway plant. It's 
how I became very familiar with Darlingtonia because I was doing all this field work looking for Hastingsia and it was leading me to Darlingtonia land over and over again. So, you know, not the most charismatic of the lilies, but still, it's pretty cool. So, oddly, here is another plant in that Agavesi group, and it's closely related to Hystingsia. It only has these beautiful purple flowers. This is called Camassia or Camas lily. And did some research on this too in grad school. But it's just so fun to find these plants here growing with Darlingtonia. Okay, here's another great little monocot that you can often find with Darlingtonia. This is Narthesium californicum. Just a beautiful yellow monocot. I find this guy all the time. Hastings you again. Look at that cute little pollinator doing its job. There's just so much going on here. There's dragonflies and butterflies everywhere. Well, thank you for joining me on this little tour of Butterfly Valley. And man, this place is just going to be cranking really cool botanical stuff all summer long because it's just going to stay wet. And as you can see, the Darlingtonia, I mean, here we are mid-June, they've hardly even started making their pictures. So, you know, if anybody gets a chance to come out here, let us know. And, um, you know, there's going to be something to see no matter when you come out here, I think. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye. The International Carnivorous Plant Society wants you to be successful with your plants. We welcome growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. We started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate these spectacular plants. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite. But our plants do.